everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, and I am back with a and a It's been a while since I've done a Q&A with y'all, but hosted this IG Live event. I got a ton of questions, so I couldn't get through all of them. I felt kind of bad, and I wanted to get back to you, and I happen to love Q&As. I picked a couple of the questions that I was asked most frequently, so this is primarily gonna be about skincare. I'm going to dive into them, so if you wanna hear more about that, then stick around, and let's get into but it. The theme that I saw was asking questions about redness. Skin redness, redness after acne, not necessarily acne scars, but how to get rid of redness, what are the best skincare products to get rid of redness, redness, rosacea, redness, redness, do you see the theme? Okay. First things first, I am not a dermatologist. Disclaimer. I always recommend that you seek the advice of a medical professional. That's pretty much it, I think. I have had rosacea. I have dealt with keratosis pilaris. If you don't know what that is, Google it. It's like chicken skin, some people call it, which I think is awful. Strawberry skin, a little bit better, but still. That's pretty much it. Like I have oily combination skin, and I've used some products that have really freaking irritated my skin. So I am on a less is more role right now when it comes to skincare. So all of that said, products that help redness. Well, okay, I think that redness in my experience is usually linked to the food I'm eating. I can see that instantly the next day, especially if I have white wine for some reason. The next morning I'll wake up and I'll just look like crazy redness. It is a direct correlation to diet. That's why I totally recommend a food journal. Certain foods will inflame. You probably know this. I'm not saying this is the only thing that's going to cure the redness. I'm not even saying it's curing redness, just keeping it at bay. The redness is telling you something. I'm now getting into Ayurvedic holistic skincare, so there's going to be more discussion about that, but I think really look at what you're eating, and I'm not just saying, oh, take away all sugar and er eliminate this. This is not like an elimination diet, all right? It's just about auditing what you're putting in your mouth. In my health coaching practice, I have also realized there are individuals out there that really just don't have the time to think about it. They're like, oh, I got to the end of the day, I had a fig bar and a sip of water. I don't know why I'm tired. You know, I get it. A lot of people don't maintain a level of awareness on what they're actually consuming. So I'm not saying cut everything out for eliminating or alleviating redness. I'm just saying audit what is on your plate because that's a part of it. Also stress and hormones, that's another story. I am not a doctor, I do not cover hormonal imbalances and stuff like that, but I have tried a few things on myself, primarily things to lower cortisol levels, which aren't pills, it's just kind of a lifestyle shift. So if I notice that that's happening, I try and get more sleep, take into account your stress levels. And in terms of product, what has worked for me in the past, and I've done it before and after on this, I've done it before and after personally on a lot of products because I don't buy the skincare claims, if you haven't noticed from my video about beauty counter. So individualized, which is why there's no short answer to your question, which is why I keep talking about it. But anyway, products that have worked for me in the past are simple, basic products. I do not use a cleanser, they irritate my skin. The thing that has worked very well for me is argan oil, but I'm not claiming that to be the holy grail only thing that works. It works in conjunction with everything that I just mentioned. It will not work if I'm drinking, you know, half a bottle of white wine. I'm gonna wake up the next day. First of all, I can't even do that anymore. I have zero tolerance at this point. My college self would be so disappointed. <laughs> I digress. If I'm using argan oil and I have a lot of wine or whatever the case may be, or tons of sugar the night before, same thing. It's not gonna work as well, but I have found that the Kahina Giving Beauty argan oil worked very well. I saw visible improvement. It was slight, but it was there. Yeah, I avoid harsh cleansers, soaps, masks, any 12 step, hell, any three step process, cleanse, moisturize, tone, all the rest of it. I recognize that that is just the holy grail combo for a lot of people. It doesn't work for me. I believe in fewer steps for my skin because that is what has worked for my skin. I don't cleanse with a harsh cleanser. If anything, I will use either the Jane Iredale Magic Mint. I just put warm water on, a little bit of coconut oil if you're irritated by that. Olive oil works. And then you just cleanse your skin off. Ew, no, you don't cleanse your skin off. And then you just take the makeup off. Definitely look at what you're using in terms of makeup. So what's going in, what's going on, and the ohm element of it. Are you de-stressing? And then really when it comes to products for me, argan oil has helped. I've also done rosehip seed oil. I think Evan Healy has some, I don't know. But you could go into a Whole Foods and ask whoever is in that area about the rosehip seed oil, which is the best one to use. The acne that I've had, so I actually had a recent zit on my chin and it was totally caused by stress, totally caused by stress. 
culminated with hormones. There's redness, it's still there, it's not as pronounced, but the way that I get rid of that is to chill. I let it do its thing. I get rid of whatever was there, I don't do any extraction methods or whatever. It needs to do what it needs to do. I wanna do like Dr. Pimple Popper here, that grosses me out. I'm like the one person that doesn't like that. Once the inflammation starts going down, what I will do is I will make sure I don't use any harsh cleansers, masks, toners, astringents, alcohol, anything like that. I only use things that I know do not inflame my skin, which are the argan oils. The herbivore bakuchiol has not irritated it, but I'll put it on and not put it here. So I just, it needs a minute to breathe and just come back to life and restore itself. It is not a big acne scar, so these do go away for me. That has been my personal experience, and those are the products that I use to get rid of redness. It is primarily, especially for keratos, I sometimes get it on my arms, and when it's dry out, when it's cold out, it's classic thing. Those are the conditions that exacerbate it. When I eat certain foods, again, food journal, food journal, food journal. I could see a direct correlation between eating a certain type of food and the keratosis pilaris. I am Italian and it goes crazy when I have garlic. And I have problems with that because I'm gonna still eat garlic because I love garlic. I was raised on garlic. What am I gonna do about that? I mean, I don't have a massive reaction, but if I don't want splotchiness and keratosis pilaris, that is something that irritates it. Again, sugary things, anything that inflames it for me irritates it. And I've tried so many topical creams and lotions and they're like exfoliate. And there's this thing out there that talks about the St. Ives apricot scrub. I mean, you'll see it. Everybody's desperate to get rid of it. So you're trying everything and I did that. None of that worked for me. As a matter of fact, the scrubs and the creams from KP Duty specifically, this is years ago. Those were the worst things for my arms. I mean, terrible. And there were so many reviews that were like, my chicken skin's gone. I've never felt better. Everything's smooth and magical. That kind of set me off into the inside out exploration of why are these things happening? What is my skin trying to tell me? It's our biggest organ. It's trying to tell us stuff. So that's my answer there. I wanted to keep this mainly about the redness question. I received some others that I answered. Um, one was about talking about dental care and shampoo on the channel. I might. Hair is really tough for me in terms of the products that I like and having them be clean. When I find them, please know that I will tell you. Yes, if I find something I love, I'll share it with you. I've been using the David's toothpaste, love it, fan, the charcoal one, no problems there. And then there were some other product-centric questions like foundations and stuff. And I referred everybody to the best of foundation roundups that I have on the channel. And testing out a ton of skincare products, by the way, it's wreaking havoc <laughs> on my skin. So that's the other reason. I was like, why am I doing this? None of these products are producing the results. No, really, like maybe one that I've tried, and I've tried at least 10 or 15 different serums or oils or cleansers. Very few of them actually fulfill the promises. I just haven't put them on here because my skin freaks out. And then that actually skews my foundation application. So I can't review a foundation for you because my skin's screwed up underneath. So I can't really give you an accurate reading on it. The other common question is related to skincare as well. And it is, has my AM and PM routine changed? Yes, it has. It went from the beginning of being simple to exploding into testing all these products. Shocker, it's going back to simple again. So I am back to the fewer better scenario. I still like certain serums. I don't even know if I'm gonna continue using them. I'm gonna start trying different modalities and therapies on my skin. Again, I will share that with you. Just make sure that I use a warm washcloth. I try not to do hot, hot water, oil cleansing, natural oils you can find in your cupboard. My skin is very happy with that. So I'm in a bit of a healing stage where I'm not trying to layer on seven steps in the morning and stuff at night. In terms of day creams and night creams, I use a lot of different tinted moisturizers today. I'll add a couple of extra moisturizers if I need it. Still loving the pie moisturizer during day. And then at night, if I use a cream, I'm still on the hunt for really good nourishing night cream. For me, the oils and serums tend to work a little bit better, I've noticed. So it just depends on which serum, 99% of them did not work, but if I find one that does, then I go with that. So again, the argan oil worked really well for me. That's pretty much it. It's gone back to where it was, my routine, my AM and PM skincare routine. Now going forward, it is going to transform again. So just like I shared everything with you about finding the best of clean and green beauty for me, and hopefully you could find it for yourself, I am now doing that with skincare, except this time it's products and bottle, but it's also looking at things beyond the bottle. There you have it. This is a bit more chit chatty. I've talked a lot. I don't know what happened to me. I didn't even have coffee and I was just like, Bleh. I think that might be kind of like a good sign. I don't know. Well, that's all I have for this Q&A. Thank you so much for asking those questions. And I know I didn't get to a ton of them, but I really had such a good time on IG Live. I will probably do a few more of those and just take the questions
questions live and not have you send them and have me not answer them. So that's coming up soon, but follow me on Instagram if you wanna be in the loop on all of that. That's all I have for today. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys right back here real soon. Until then, bye.